Hi Year 4 and welcome to today's Reading for Pleasure. For the rest of this week we're going to learn a little bit more about Roman towns. So I'm going to read you a little bit from this book, Life in a Roman Town Every Day. And it will help you towards your writing if you decide that you're going to do the brochure to try and persuade people to come to Rome or to a Roman town. So we're going to start with... Forum. The Forum was an open-air space, usually in the middle of the town. It was used for meetings and markets. All around the Forum were important buildings. There were temples to Roman gods and goddesses. There were the bacillas from where officials ran the country and organised what went on in the town. The officials had to make sure drains worked and the markets were run properly. This is part of the Forum of Pompeii in Italy. The column on the far right is where the Temple of Jupiter, God of the Sky, stood. The paved area between that and the next set of columns had a roof to make a shady walkway. The law courts were also in the Basilla building. When the lawyers and officials were not using the bacilla, it was used for markets or public meetings. People, mostly men, also came to the forum to chat, find work or arrange a marriage or a business deal. Women and children, especially from rich families, mainly stayed at home. The roads into the forum were packed with people and slow, heavy carts carrying goods to be sold or traded. Rich senators like these met in the forum to talk business. They also ruled the empire until emperors took over from 27 BC. When they ran the empire, they did all their decision making in a building at the forum. The baths. Now, the baths in Roman towns were very, very famous. And in fact, you might know that there is a city in the United Kingdom, in England, called Bath. And if you were to go there, you could actually go to where the where there's an original Roman bath. So you might want to do that one day. The baths. All towns had public baths. Here, people could wash, bathe, swim and exercise. Some towns had several public baths, each with different entry charges depending on what they provided. The cheapest public baths just had a changing room and three connecting rooms kept at different temperatures. There was a cold room with a cold pool, a warm room where bathers oiled and scraped themselves clean and a hot room with a hot pool. The entrance halls to baths like this one had rooms running off right and left. They were often important meeting places for bathers with a fountain and a seating area. Romans bathed naked and oiled and scraped themselves clean. There was no soap. More expensive public baths had saunas, open air pools and slaves to clean and massage the bathers. Some towns had public baths just for women and girls or just for men and boys. Other baths were open to men, women or families at different times of the day. Some public baths provided food and drinks such as bread, cheese, fruit, water and wine. Walls, floors and ceilings were decorated with mosaics and paintings. Noisy neighbours. The Roman writer Seneca lived opposite a public bath. I hear all the groans and grunts of people exercising or pretending to. I hear the slapping sounds of people being massaged. Then there are those who like to sing or dive in loudly. The noise of people having their armpits plucked is awful. Can you imagine living next to the public baths? Hmm, not sure I'd be quite keen to do that. Okay, that's it for today. We'll read a little bit more tomorrow. Bye for now.